Your Grace, Archbishop Philip Agnolo. Your Grace, Archbishop Emeritus Zakaya Sokoth. And, and O Priests, the sisters, the brothers, and the people of the Archdiocese of Kisumu. When I was asked by one of the committee members planning for this Mass to preach in this Mass, I was a little bit taken aback. So I asked, uh, I asked him, are you sure? And he said, yes, we want you to give the homily. But they told me it's supposed to be a secret, it's supposed to be a surprise to the Archbishop. And so what I did, because I wasn't sure, I called the Archbishop. <laughs> and I asked him, this is what the committee has suggested to me. I want to know whether you are comfortable with it. I didn't even finish. He said, yeah, you go, you go ahead, you go ahead. So I want to apologize to the committee for breaking the secrecy. I'm sorry that I had to break it because I really needed to be sure that uh, I was actually to preach today. You know, when I was reflecting on this day, something came to me that God is a God of surprises. He is always surprising us. Each one of us can attest to the, to the fact that even in our own lives, we plan, we make structures, we look ahead for the future, then suddenly from somewhere, we find ourselves in completely different worlds and scenarios. Sometimes it becomes so difficult for us to understand. Why is it happening? Why me? Why us? And as Christians, we seek answers. Some seek answers from wrong people. But we as Christians always seek answers from the scriptures. How do we understand such surprises in our lives? That is why in the first reading, the reading from the book of Samuel, the prophet Samuel is sent to the house of Jesse to anoint a king because God had rejected Saul as the king of Israel. And the instructions to the prophet were very clear. You are to anoint the one I indicate. Very clear. You are to anoint the one I choose. It is the Lord who chooses the king. So when Samuel arrives, Jesse presents to him his sons. There is Eliab. And when he comes, he is attractive, he is tall, and he is strong. And even in his heart, Samuel says, he must be the one. Then the voice comes and tells Samuel, no, he is not the one. Do not look at appearances, because the Lord does not look as people do. Then comes Abinadab, and it is a no. Then Shama, it is a no. Then Jesse presents his seven sons. They all pass by, and the answer is no. And then Samuel asks Jesse, do you have another son? And Jesse say, yes, the youngest. He's standing the ship. Definitely, for Jesse, this was not among his list. He was too young. And Samuel says, please call him. And David comes, and immediately David appears. The Lord says to Samuel, rise and anoint him. And David becomes the king of Israel. What a surprise for Jesse. I'm sure it also surprised Samuel. He surprised Samuel because he did not, he would have judged by appearances. It, uh, this explains why many times we are surprised by God. Because as the readings tells us today, the Lord does not look at us as humans do. Sometimes we are attracted by what we see and appearances. And sometimes I always say, if priests, sisters, brothers, and bishops 
were, were, to, were elected democratically through voting, some of us will not even see the gate of the seminary. We will be voted out because we don't appear appealing to people. We are not as rich. We come from humble families. We may not be talented, even the way we talk. But sometimes, that's why we say vocation is really a mystery, because God surprises us. There are so many examples in the scriptures that God surprises people. But the, the most clear of them is when he chose Mary to be the mother of God, of Jesus. And even when she was told that she will be the mother of Jesus, she asked the angel this question, how can this be? How can this be? Today, we ask the same of his grace, Archbishop. How can this be? He has only been in Kisumu for three years. We expected him to be here longer. How can this be? And then he is taken to be the Archbishop of Nairobi, the capital city. He looks too humble for that. How can this be? And because we do not have answers as humans, we can only find these answers in the scriptures. Because God tells us he does not look at us as humans do. In fact, in the words of Mary herself, he says, he raises the lowly. When, when Archbishop Philip was appointed the Bishop of Kericho, I was two years as a priest. We come from the same diocese of Eldoret. And when it was announced, to tell you the truth, it shocked all of us. He's no, he was not in any list. You know, even as priests, we discuss among ourselves, but he was not in any list at all. So when it came, it came to us as a surprise that he will be the first bishop of Kericho. He was still a very humble priest. He was a diocesan secretary, the secretary to the bishop. So we, it's, it's like uh, there are priests you don't expect that they will be appointed bishops. So when he was appointed, it was a shock for all of us in the diocese. But even though it was a shock, we knew that it was a right choice. Because he was very good to us as priests when he worked in the office. I did visit him in Kericho, and the first time I visited, I was a little bit scared. How will I relate to him now as a bishop? Because I knew how to relate to him as a priest. I went there with a lot of uh, humility or false humility, I would say. And then when I sat there and we stayed with him for a few days, I realized he has not changed. He still, in fact, he was even more humble than before. And from that time, I realized that what is in him is just part of him. This calls us to invite, it invites us to be deep in our faith. Knowing the Archbishop very well for many years, I'm sure he never thought he will ever go to Nairobi. He thought that he will retire in Kisumu. But God had another plan for him. This reminds me of the words of the gospel today. That when you are older, someone will take your hand and you will go where you do not want to go. This is where the love of Christ has taken our loving archbishop. He has simply become a nomad of faith. From Eldoret, he went to Kericho, and when he thought he will grow old there, he was moved to Homa Bay. When he thought, oh, this is it, he was appointed an archbishop of Kisumu, and I'm sure he must have thought, now this is my last stop. Then poop from nowhere to Nairobi. God's ways are really mysterious. It is not something that we can actually be able to explain but it is something that we can be able to learn from 
this challenges all of us wherever we are to think deeper of our love of our lives and our love for Christ we live in our culture today a global culture that sometimes presents values that are completely opposite to the gospel values the culture that we live today is a culture that promotes so much materialism that it makes us all empty we acquire so much but deep down we are so empty this becomes the tick that sucks our resources our faith and replaces our families why is it that today people are more depressed than they were before yet we have so much around us why is it today that even deaths within families are at a rise when families are supposed to be the most secure places in the world there is so much emptiness there is so much loss of families there is so much disrespect of other humans and it has become a call for us to go deeper into our faith the era of secularism continue to push religion away slowly the states have become above god they want to redefine life they want to restructure marriages and they want to create situations where we are far from god jesus said to us seek first the kingdom of god and all other things you'll be given because man shall not live on bread alone but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of god we are li living in what i call a profit making culture everything is about making profits even religion has not been spared we are all watering down the message of christ and demanding more and more power this culture that has enslaved us is leaving us empty and the gospel of christ is suffering because apart from the fact that it actually empties us of the values that are from god it also encourages a lot of competition so that everybody wants to be on top everybody wants to be number one you know we remember when we are going to school when schools close and we are given the report forms the first thing your parents will ask you which number were you and if you are number 20 30 you will not the parents will not be happy we were taught we were socialized to actually be on top to be number one we want to be number one to be recognized and even adored is a cancer that is killing our culture and the message of the the, the gospel but with a choice with the archbishop we learn one thing that it is okay not always to be on top you don't have to be number one knowing the archbishop as a very humble man god is telling us that it's okay to be number two it's even okay to be number three there is nothing wrong with that you don't have to be number one even to our politicians you don't have to be on top if you are number two well and good because nobody everybody cannot always be on top you don't have to fight or to be on top because god has a way of lifting you up wherever you are the true way of greatness is only through the gate of humility because as we read in the scriptures today god raises the lowly Archbishop Philip in his simplicity has taught us many lessons and today I will mention three one that humility is a virtue it was Saint Augustine who said I will teach you the ways of God the first one is humility the second one is humility and the third one is humility look at our Archbishop always so humble even going to the level of talking to the kids it's very easy to host and one thing that i know i came to learn later when he was an archbishop 
that he's not attached. One day we were driving to Nairobi and we went to to get some coffee. I said, let me get, buy you some coffee. So we stopped at um, a place that I buy coffee and he insisted that he's going to buy the coffee. So I said, okay. So then he removed his phone and he was trying to ask me to show him where the M-Pesa thing is. <laughs> and uh, I realized, do you have money in the M-Pesa? I said, I don't know whether sister has sent. That's when I realized he never carried money with him. He never carried money with him. What he carries with him is a smile. And it has taught me this, that you can touch people even without giving them money. This is something that we need actually to go out of. Look at all this crowd. You did not come here because the Archbishop gave you money. You came here because he touched you in one way or another. That amidst the pollution of this culture that actually uh, adores materialism, he has brought to us an Archbishop who teaches the way of Christ, which is the way of humility. God came to us through Jesus Christ. And even though he was God, he actually humbled himself to be born poor and as a little baby. So that when we see the story of Christmas, God himself laying in that manger in poverty, we can simply say, look at the humility of God. And this is what this world and this culture needs. Humility that teaches us the way of Christ. Personally, I'm very happy that the Archbishop will go to Nairobi because they will need this lesson of humility. I'm happy that we can actually watch him on a national level as the leader of the church because he will teach us the way to Christ, which is humility. The second thing that I have learned from the Archbishop and you too is that listening is a power. Archbishop Philip is a very good listener. So good that sometimes you feel, especially if you are dishonest, you feel that you are actually in the presence of something, you know. You will talk, he will say very little, less, but he will be listening to you. And he has taught me that it is good to listen not only to what is said is being said but also to listen to what is not being said it reminds us of this this famous quote that we have been given two years and one mouth for a reason because many people confuse information with knowledge knowledge information can be got from anywhere from Facebook, from Twitter, everywhere. There is so much information. But it, that is not necessarily knowledge. They are not the same thing. Knowledge involves the interpretation of that information. And knowledge involves listening. Our culture has lost the sense of listening. So that only the best way, because the best way to learn is to be a listener. But the problem in Ke about Kenya is that we talk too much. Everyone is an expert of everything, and no one is listening. We are experts in politics. We are even experts in COVID-19. We are experts in everything. You go to Facebook, all this, everybody is an expert. But the problem is, no one is listening. It is wisdom not to comment on everything, but to reflect more and more and listen to what is not being said. Mary did this herself when she treasured everything about Jesus in her heart. In fact, Mary said very few words, but her witness is so strong. Joseph, the husband of Mary, didn't even speak a word in the scriptures, yet we consider him to be a patron of so many groups, not because of what he said, but because he was a good listener. He listened to God, and by listening to God, 
it changed the way, the perception of how he was looking at his life. Bishop can listen to you so much that you can be uncomfortable, especially when you are dishonest. And this is one thing that I learned. Even if he keeps quiet, he knows a lot. It reminds me of a story of a child who went to church because the, this child was brought up by parents who never went to church. So when the parents decided to go for a vacation somewhere, they took this child and aunt and they said, you will stay with the aunt until we come back. So the aunt told the child, you know, when you are in my house, you will follow my rules. And one of the rules is that we go to church on Sunday. So on Sunday, we are going to church with you. But when we get there, I want you to be very attentive to what the priest will be saying. And the child says, yes, auntie. So they go to church. And it happened at that time, the priest was preaching about how Jesus was crucified. And he was taking it vividly through the actions. And the child was so taken until he started to cry. So the, the aunt said, why are you crying? He said, because the man, this priest is talking about, really suffered a lot. And the nurse said, shh, it's just a story. It's just a story. That is what we listen. So many times when we listen to the message of Christ, it simply becomes a story. It is just a story. But I think reflecting on what has happened to us and even this movement of the Archbishop, we realize it's not just a story. It's a commitment. Every time the Archbishop has to commit himself to the message of Christ, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And when he said the fifth time he was told, go to Nairobi. He must have shocked him. Just as he shocked us. But that takes me to the third point. What I have learned from the Archbishop, that obedience is strength. You know, when I look at his life, the many I think he's the only bishop who has gone to all those dioceses in his lifetime. I don't think I know of anybody else in Kenya. Maybe some have gone to two, but more than two, I think he's the only one. And I think that, because it is a, 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 a sign of obedience, I, I think that gives a lot of strength. Because it gives you experience. It also gives you a kind of a better view of what Kenya is. So he has taught us to be obedient. And I think being obedient to God and to the church has become very difficult these days. People will be more obedient to other people than to God. When I was working in a parish in, in a Kitale one day, there was campaign time, and we were celebrating Mass. And the Mass was going on, and immediately in the, in the, in the compound, there were all these hooting, people hooting. Someone was coming to look for votes in the church. Believe me or not, three quarters of the church left and went out. Some were even genuflecting, facing outside instead of facing the, facing the church. So I was telling them, please come, the mass is not over. And one show show told me, inakuja mara moja kwa miakatano. Wewe uko up. That becomes, it actually shows how much it is very difficult to listen to God, especially at those times when there is a, a, a temptation to materialism, to riches. The voice of the shilling invites us even to betray our own God. I believe that with the appointment of the Archbishop of Nairo, to Nairobi, that we will be able to learn and to go deeper into why and our identity as a church. We are a church because we are followers of Christ. Everything else comes after. Everything else comes after. That is why even Jesus says, if you want to follow me, you must carry your cross and follow me. 
and our archbishop has carried his cross with a smile on his face. Sometimes you don't even know when the cross is heavy to him. Because he'll, he'll just tell you, mm, 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 and you think, oh, everything is okay. But he's carrying a very heavy cross. And even when he goes to Nairobi, the weight of the cross has been increased. It is now heavier. We need to pray for him. But I will, I'll, I'll finish with my four famous quote, quote that I quoted when he asked me to preach on his 25th anniversary. And I will repeat it now because it means so much to me. The beauty of God is hidden in the ugliness of a caterpillar. When you look at a caterpillar, it looks ugly. But after time, it transforms and becomes a beautiful butterfly that everybody wants to touch. That is the beauty of God. It attracts. What does not attract us? Sometimes there is something deep in it. That is why St. Paul says in his letters that everything will fade away. We should look for things that are eternal. We praise God for the Archbishop having worked in this diocese for those three years, just like Jesus did. We pray that wherever he goes, that God go with him. May we pray for him. And may God give you, the people of Kisumu, a good shepherd. Praise be to Jesus. Oh.